Thank you. Again, my name is Richard Velke. I'm the chief of the Scatterco Tribe of Nation in Kent, Connecticut. I'd like to thank Chief Francis and the Penobscot Nation for having this form on Indian Island today. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs, Larry Roberts, and the representatives of the Office of Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs. I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you today and present testimony on behalf of the Scatterco Tribe of Nation of the discussion about of the potential changes to the Department's Code of Federal Regulations, Part 83, process for acknowledging certain Indian groups as federally recognized tribes. I would like to begin by saying that from the perspective of a tribal nation that has been through the federal acknowledgement process, we do support the direction in the discussion draft appears to be pursuing in terms of making the federal acknowledgement process more transparent, more clear, more efficient, and more workable. By way of background, Scatterco Tribal Nation filed our letter of intent in 1981. In January of 2004, the Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs issued a positive final determination of our petition. However, that determination was met with a firestorm of political opposition from the state of Connecticut, Connecticut politicians, and Connecticut towns. Every member of the Connecticut congressional delegation joined in publicly denouncing the department's positive final determination of a tribal nation that has existed for more than 400 years. And it was also been recognized as an Indian tribe from colonial times to the present, first by the colony of Connecticut when it, was, when it sequestered lands for our nation in the 1700s, and later by the state establishment of a reservation for the Scattercook Tribal Nation in 1736. In 2005, a year after the positive final determination, the unrelented political pressure of the interior, on the Interior Department and the White House led to an unprecedented, unprecedented reversal of the positive final determination. And we considered final determination was issued, concluding that the Static of Tribal Nation was not entitled to a government-to-government -government relationship with the United States. The Static of Tribal Nation shares this unique status with just one other tribal group also recognized by the state of Connecticut, the historical East of Deepwaters. Our experience in the process suggests to us that the discussion draft does not represent a dramatic departure from the standards that have been applied in the past, but it does take a more thoughtful approach to the relevance of the state recognition and the pro probative value of a state action in establishing a reservation for a tribe. Static of Tribal Nation commends the authors of the discussion draft in proposing expedited favorable criteria that would make the process more efficient in terms of time entailed in the processing of the petition. The petitioner has either maintained a reservation recognized by the state since 1934 and continues to hold the reservation recognized by the state, or if the United States has held land for a group at any point in time since 1934. This is a fair and reasonable expectation. We also believe that the proposed relationship between an expedited favorable finding and a finding that a group meets the mandatory criteria of paragraph D, E, F, and G of section 83.7 accords the appropriate weight relevance to the probative value of the state established and state recognized reservation. This criterion is also fair and reasonable in expediting the insurance of final determination acknowledging the petitioner as an Indian tribe. Our experience in the federal acknowledgement process is a good case in point of why the discussion draft commendably eliminates that part of the process that allows for a petition for reconsideration. When the Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs issued a positive final determination, it is only after all the evidence 
that has been submitted to the department, both supportive and oppositional, has been carefully evaluated within the context of the evidentiary standards. As the Deputy Secretary of all knows, prior to the Assistant Secretary assures of a final determination, the burden is on the petitioner to prove that it meets all applicable mandatory criteria. Once the Assistant Secretary determines that the burden has been met, the resultant positive final determination should be the final agency action of the department. Thereafter, as in most other challenges of administration final agency action, the burden proving that the Assistant Secretary positive final determination is arbitrary and capricious or an abuse of the Secretary discretion should rest with those who would like to litigate their opposition of the Assistant Secretary's determination. In addition, as a tribal nation that received a positive final determination, which was later reconsidered and reversed, we firmly believe that there should be an opportunity for a petitioner to make the case, supported by a ponderance of evidence, that the changes from the previous version of the regulation to the current version warrants reversal of a negative final determination. In conclusion, reform of the federal acknowledgement process has been a long time in coming. It is clear that we will thoroughly examine all that has gone on before in the federal acknowledgement process and responsibly taken into consideration recommendations for how the process can be made clearer, more efficient, more transparent, more accountable, more equitable, and certainly more workable for tribes. We are grateful for your efforts and for your courage in taking on that has for too long been characterized as an intractable problem. In doing so, we have undoubtedly been guided by the wisdom of our elders when they taught us that nothing is impossible. One such elder, one of Indians' country's greatest advocates, commented on two most controversial issues that have for years played the effort to reform the federal acknowledgement process. And it was summed up in this way, I quote, should the fact that a state has recognized tribes for over 200 years be a factor for consideration in the acknowledgement process? I would say definitely yes. How could it be otherwise? Don't most, if not all of our states, want the federal government to recognize official actions of the state government? When most of our states want the federal government to defer to the sovereign decisions and the actions of those states over the course of their history, I think the answer to that question would be decisively in the affirmative. So let it be clear about one thing. The federal acknowledgement process is all about recognition and the sovereignty of native nations that were here long before immigrants came to American shores. That quote comes from Senator, the late Senator Daniel Henry, made on, in May of 2005 in a hearing before the United States Committee on Indian Affairs. I'd like to thank also all the tribes for being here today, and especially those that have already made it through the federal recognition process and took the time today to come and speak on behalf of the tribes that are still going through this process. Our tribes are one that submitted over 45,000 pages of documentation. Ridiculous. We are still in the BIA today. If you go into need for federal recognition, what to do? We're listed as follow the Scapital Tribal Nation to achieve the recognition. Figure it out. Why? Here we are here today, still fighting the beat with our federal brothers and sisters. I thank you all for your time today, and thank you, Larry, for being here, and for your counsel.